Okay. Okay. Before you talk to Tower, then here's here's. Uh, are you familiar with the, what a VOR is? Have you ever? It's a it's a land based uh, navigational facility, and um, to which you know we we can navigate to. It sends out signals 360 degree, you know, 360 distinct radials that we can tune in on and fly to it. Well, one of those VORs is, is located right up on the hill here. It's called Woodside VOR, right. OSI for short. The frequency, if you look at the at the chart, if you had a chart, we we'll right back before we leave today. I'd like to get those. Yeah, my charts. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, if you look at the radio frequency for that Woodside VOR is one one three point nine. Huh? Now this this these are the nav radios, and they work just like the com radios, except it's a mirror image, so the active frequencies are over here. Uh, but right now, like unlike the comms, we don't have any any green frequency over here. N neither one of these is active because we haven't selected the proper uh, CDI for this. So if you press that CDI button once, you'll get a single green arrow, and that then uh, is tied to nav one. Right. Okay. If you hit it a second time, you get a double green arrow, and that is tied to nav two. All right. So, but we're going to use nav one. Okay, so okay. Hit again. Yeah, hit it. Then that's GPS navigation. Okay. We, uh, so hit it. And now, if you rotated this course knob, this triangular course knob, mm -hmm. okay, to the point where uh, that center section is called the course deviation indicator, that means, you know, uh, now there's, there's two places that it's going to center with the arrow pointing that way and with the arrow pointing in, in the reverse direction, reciprocal of that. Okay? But in either case, look at this little little arrowhead here, that inside arrowhead. When I turn this around, watch, it flips and it points back. It always points always to points. the VOR. Okay. Uh, regardless of where the course arrow is pointing. So we're going to go fly to the VOR. And as soon as we take off, get out the bridge, we'll center this up, and I'll have you fly to that VOR, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. Okay. Follow out the tower system at 2407 November, ready for departure, runway 31, left Dunbar departure. Cessna 2407 November, Palo Alto Tower, runway 31, clear for takeoff, left to Martin. Clear for takeoff, runway 3107 November. Cessna 9 Tango Whiskey, number 1, runway 31, clear for the option. Number 1 for runway 31, 669 Tango I don't know, takeoff and departure both mean the same thing to me. How are you going to depart without taking off? They say that it just avoids the confusion of the instruction that the runway is ready for you. So they say. All right. Makes sense. Those Germans must get confused rather easily. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh huh. Palo Alto Tower, ident, make left traffic, runway 31. It's your ident for 849er, uh, we'll make left traffic, runway 31. Okay, it's right about here, then turn 10 degrees to the right to a heading of about 320 on the heading indicator. Right about there is good. And then if you look down to the left, you'll be able to see the residential area that we're trying Traffic. to get around here. And as long as we do, then we're fine. Make right traffic, runway 31. Right traffic, right down road. Cessna 849er uh, traffic, uh, 9 o'clock, about 2 miles, converging southeastbound, climbing through 1,300 Pilatus. We have traffic on site, 489er. Is that turn now? Yeah, I can turn.
I'll take this coarse air right here and, and turn it so that that needle gets centered. Inside one or the other? In, inside one. Oh yeah, that's your barrel. That's the inside, the triangular. This one. Yeah. Right there. All right, and then just go fly to that arrow. Just go ahead, put that straight up and down, more or less. This is 07 November, widen out 10 degrees to the right, traffic uh, slightly west of Stanford, inbound on the 45, descending through 1,800 assessment. Okay, looking at the traffic. Well, I'm wrong. I'm sorry, uh, 07 November. Let's go. er traffic uh, 11 o'clock and 3 miles southbound, altitude indicates 1,700 assessment. Why don't you pitch down a little bit so we can... Traffic. There's traffic up here in oh, front of us somewhere. This is 07 November, previous traffic has you in sight. They're now uh, 12 o'clock and about a mile and a half, 1,700 indicated. Okay, still looking, 07 November. This is 57 November, number one, runway 31, clear to land. Clear to land, 57 November. Traffic. Below us slightly. Here he is right down there. Nope. 5 7 November, one departure ahead of you. Got it. Okay. 5 7 November. <laughs> Resume our climb? Yep. Listen, Meyer Tango Whiskey, runway 31, clear for takeoff. Alright, so. Clear for takeoff, runway 31. Uh, so, so when this goes off to the right, it means you're slightly to the left, of course. So you turn slightly to the right. So you're the white plane, and this section is what you want to be on. Just picture it that way. Right about 07 there is 07 good. November, traffic no factor, frequency change approved. Have a good flight. Okay, talk to you later. Zero seven November. I'll turn them down. All right. All right, but the arrow moved. I know. Yeah, now it's well. No, the the arrow's moving with the with your turn. It's stationary. The plane is what's moving around that arrow. So we'll see. Okay. This part of it moving, that's just erratic. It's erratic uh, signal right now. I don't know why. It shouldn't be fluctuating like that. But now, if, if you maintain this course, so you're, you're flying to the left of the arrow. So move to the right. Turn the other way. Oh. All right. You, you're moving the white arrow on the top there. I want that white arrow lined up with the green Well, arrow. more or less, yeah. Right. Unless there's a crosswind, in which case you'd have to... Right, right there. Now, to go to level flight, line those two pointers up. Uh -huh. All right, do a little less than an instrument flying. We'll have to do, we're going to be doing more of that <coughs> eventually. All right. Now, as we get closer to the VOR, happens is it, the signal becomes much more sensitive because all the radials are converging on the VOR so there isn't that much difference between them all so it's very it's very difficult to keep this centered as we get close to the VOR right now you want those lined up well, more or less right now what I really want is to get this in the in lined up with the arrow right. so if I fly towards it it's going to come in watch I just hold this heading. See how that's coming, starting to come in. All right, that's lining it up. And once it's lined, once it's perfectly aligned, then I'll go back to flying it on course. Right now, we're kind of intercepting it. That's what we're doing. I want you to level off here. I guess we're not going to get into Half Moon Bay, are we? Fog. You see that little uh, uh, bare spot on the hill up there to the left side? That's the VOR. Okay. That's where the VOR is. I gotta look at the fog now. Yeah. So now this is come in line. Now if you turn to the left to follow that arrow, just head in that direction that the arrow is pointing, it would take us directly over that VOR. Right, right there, level out. 
That should agree with what we see out the window. Oh, okay. okay. We're now tuned. We're now tuned in. We're finding this one specific radial right to the VOR that we're tuned in on. Even try as you might, as you head right over directly over the VOR, this thing can't. You, this will not stay centered. It's going to swing off to the right or left just because it's. It's so sensitive. And as we pass over it, that little arrow is, is going to flip down. Because it'll be behind us. That's right. It's we kind of talk refer to it as the two from indicator. Right now we're two. That, that CDI is swinging off way to the left, just because we're going right over it. And right about there. Okay. Okay. That's the whole concept of uh, VOR navigation. We'll be using that on your second cross country. That and GPS. Now, this was the this used to be the mainstream form of navigation until GPS came along. Now GPS is you know almost user, universally used instead of VOR, but VORs are still around. But when you um, call in tower and you say you're over Woodside, you're not necessarily yeah you know you're in the vicinity yeah vicinity. Okay. <laughs> We're same with Slack. We call them from Slack. I'm not right over it. <coughs> oh look at that. Okay. No, well, now this this section that we're about ready to exit, this section that's the four thousand right in here. This uh, this out here is six thousand. How do we know that? Well, we can press this, bring it up here. I like that. And that's six thousand. This down here, roll the arrow down here. That's four thousand. Right, so we can see how we did that. Okay, let's go ahead and climb up to 5,500. As soon as we get up there, we will, or actually 4,000, we'll say 4,500, and then we'll do some slow flight. If you like, you can head that direction, we'll... Somewhat close to where we could land if we had to. <coughs> As we get higher in altitude, the air gets thinner. When the air gets thinner, we adjust the air, the fuel going into the engine to get to restore the proper air fuel ratio. Right now, in a climb, though, we won't, we wouldn't do that. It's when we go into cruise. But right now, what you can do is you can rotate the mixture counterclockwise to bring the zero down to the top of that green band. It'll move slowly at first, so keep rotating it. This gets us a little closer to the proper air fuel ratio, and it will give us a little bit more engine power. It's coming down slowly. Right about there, stop for a minute, because there's a lag to it. All right, yeah, I can rotate a little bit more. Right there, okay, try that. That's good enough. By doing that, uh, it gives us a little bit more power, because if we have, you know, just uh, too much fuel going in there, it kind of uh, bog, you know, causes the engine to bog down. All right. So let's. Uh, I'm going to put my sunglasses on. Let me. Let's go ahead and uh, slow down the airplane now. I. I just want. I don't want you to get too 
you know, I don't want to get too focused on the steps necessarily. I just want to look at the big picture, what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is we want to slow down the airplane, get all the flaps in, and we want to do all that without losing much of any altitude. Right. Okay, so the first step is going to be slowing down the airplane, bringing the throttle back. As you do, it's going to be necessary to start pitching back a little bit, otherwise the plane will start descending. But as soon as you get the power back, I'd say to about 1,700, then you can start lowering the first 10 degrees of flaps almost immediately. So let's try that. And make sure you look mainly out the window, out the straight. Okay, because if you get too focused on the instruments, you tend to lose sight of where the plane is going. Okay. okay. All right, so 10 degrees of flaps. All right. Now we're below 85, so actually you can drop them all in if you want, just all at one time. Boom. All right, and as the plane starts to slow down, then add more power in. Because as we get below 60 knots, we get on the, what's called the backside of the power curve. And to go slower, we actually have to add more power. Right about there is about right. 2,000 or so. Just pitch back to about 50 knots. Trim it. And you've just gotten into the slow flight regime. If you could do what you just did there with, uh, without coaching, then that would easily pass the check ride. Or 52 knots, maintaining altitude. Yep. So now to go back to normal flight, again, looking outside the window, uh, just go full power, lower the nose to the level. Okay. Okay, let the plane accelerate. Get the first 10 degrees of flaps up almost right away after you put the full power in. So go full power. All right, a little right, and then first 10 only. Okay. Maintain altitude. See, it sags a little bit. All right, then once you got, it starts picking up speed, then you can raise the other two incrementally. Just give it a little space in between. The idea is to maintain head angle throughout the transition okay. and maintain altitude. So I'll try it again. As soon as we get back up to normal cruise speed, I'll let you try it without uh, any prompting. What I like, you know, what I'll, you know, what I'll have you do is, then once you're, you know, once you're out here soloing, you'll come out here by yourself. You can come, you know, and practice all this by yourself at will. Really? Yep. Okay. So you get good at it. All right. So cruise flight. All right, so we're going to go to 1,700. We're going to uh, maintain the pitch. Okay. Well, you want to maintain the altitude. Uh, maintain the altitude, and we're going to pitch up, basically, as well. Yeah, yeah. you power. coordinate that. If you do it too much, you'll start climbing, so you just want to coordinate that. At the same time, you also want to maintain heading. So if you look at it as you're reducing power, you, you know, you'll see the nose move a little bit. All right, well, I'll try it now. Yeah, just go ahead. Just give it a swing. All right, so reduce power. Yep. See how that nose goes to the right? Uh, just okay. Okay. Flaps in there now. That's right. And right rudder at the same time. You get those left turning tendencies at this airspeed. All right, not bad. Back to 2100. About tw This is about the sweet spot. See, at this point, you, the amount of pitch controls the airspeed. The amount of power you have controls altitude. Now, right now, we're climbing a little bit, so you would just reduce power if that were the case. So, if you're, you know, your power only controls your rate of climb or descent or level of flight. Your pitch is what controls the airspeed. Right. Power at level flight, slow. That's right. This is the level slow flight. Yep. Now, if we wanted to slow down to 50, let's you try that. Slow down to 50. Reduce power. Well, so, yeah, you'll have to pitch back and reduce power simultaneously to find a new, new sweet spot. And okay, now you see the altitude starting to go down, so you add a little power to correct this. Okay. But your pitch is right. Your pitch is right for airspeed, just that the power needs to come up. There you go, right about there. 
and then you would trim this. This would be okay. Now, when we're here, uh, you may be asked to do a, a turn to the right or left. Let's turn around about 180 degrees. When you do it, when you're in slow flight, though, you want to main. You want just no more than a, a 20 degree bank. No more than. Okay. Right. So that's 10, 20. So go ahead and turn to the left. Bank no more than 20 degrees. May need to add some power in the turn to just to hold altitude. You're, keep your pitch just where it is. Again, 20 degrees would be max. I usually use 10 degrees just if I were doing it like 